this is the next video in the series I've been doing on um, Vue.js with AWS Amplify. Um, part three, I covered create, CRUD, create, update, delete with the data store. And in that application, we were just saving a bunch of text information. If I open up the uh, app, you'll see we just had this simple form. But what we're doing here in this um, fourth video is we, not a lot of great UI here, but what we're doing, we're allowing you to associate an image file that can be saved with an entry that's added to the system. And as you can see, here's a couple I've added already. Um, I also made a minor modification to UI. So instead of just a list view, we now have this card view, but let's just show you what we're gonna to try to build. So this is a new item, um, new item with photo. Um, and let's just, See if we can find a simple image to upload. Let's upload, hmm, what is this? So I've selected a photo to upload and let's click save. And it has uploaded the photo. Oh, I did not know that was gonna be, but it's a photo of my beautiful wife that's been uploaded. And um, you saw that it automatically updated the list. It rendered the photo and everything's here. So this is what we're gonna cover in this video. Please make sure that um, you like and subscribe. Please make sure you leave any suggestions for other videos that you'd like to see me create. And um, let's get to the code. So we're just gonna hop right in here and back into the admin UI. As you can see, there's a separate section that you can click on it, uh, kind of walk you through the steps to get storage added to your project. We already have installed the CLI, so we're going to do that. But we do need to kind of pull the changes to my local project. So let's do that first. Um, you just enter, well, we're just gonna paste the command here in the terminal that we have set up for the project and we're gonna let this thing run. All right, now that's all set up. Let's find the next step. The next step is to actually add storage. I'm gonna copy that command and let's paste that in here. We're gonna let this thing run. I'm pretty certain this one's gonna take a little bit longer to run, but we're just stepping through and kind of setting the appropriate um, responses. We're just gonna upload images this time around, so we're gonna select that. We're gonna kind of label what we want it to be called. Um, so let's enter that value here. And so now we have that, we're gonna provide a bucket name and let's just keep what we currently have. This way we can ensure it's unique. We're gonna make sure that authenticated users only have access. It's great because this approach will kind of um, set up all that user pool crap and everything for you. So you need to worry about setting it up. And we're gonna kind of check all of these. So let's just go down and click them all. And then after that, uh, we, we're not gonna add any triggers. We're gonna keep this simple. And now it's done. The next step uh, we're gonna have to do is kind of do this push to make sure everything gets synced properly. So let's enter the command here and uh, let this rip. Okay, we enter our imply push. Um, yes, I wanna continue. By the way, these steps are all um, documented. I'll add the link below under in the Amplify uh, documentation under storage, but I'll add the link below so that you can check them out yourself. Okay, and I'll just let this run. Well, um, got a little bit longer. Okay, now everything's all set. Our, um, we've set up our backend environment. Now it's time to start to look at the code and figure out how to add this functionality so we can associate images at specific tasks and save them in S3 buckets. So now here we are back in the code, uh, but before I just realized one thing, before we hop into the code, we need to make sure that we make some changes to our data model. So just so you know, here I am, I'm inside of my admin UI for our application. If I click on view data model, um, here's the existing fields. We wanna add another field, which is gonna hold the key to our image that we upload into the bucket. So let's click add a field. We're gonna call that field just file. And we're just gonna keep it simple and just leave it as a type string. And what we'll do is we'll store the key to the image in the bucket here inside the task. And then what we'll do is when we load the task, we'll use the key to get access to the image. Um, now this is gonna take some time because 
it needs to take the changes that we're making to the schema and deploy them up uh, to Amazon. So let's just uh, run this. And then also, what you're going to have to remember is after we run this, we're then going to have to pull it to get the changes uh, back down into our local application. Well, while this is running, you know, deploying, let's take a quick peek at the uh, documentation for storage API, which we're using. Um, so uh, this link will also be included. But as you can see, we've done all of this stuff here already. Um, we don't need to do any of this manual setup because Amplify has done all this for us. So we can skip down. We don't need to set up any of this right now. So we're just going to go straight to all that's done for us. We're not using custom plugin. Um, let's go, let's hop over here to upload files. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to just use a put to upload the file. And it will by default be saved at the public level, which is fine for what we're doing for this purpose of the sample. Going into different security levels and things like that are beyond the scope of this um, video. This video is just about getting the images up and pulling them back down. Let's let's hop over to the code now. If you look at our UI right now, when you click on new, we're, there's no place to select the file. So what we're going to do is just quickly just use a simple file input to select the file that can be associated with this entry. So that, so we're inside our entry form, which is this component. And what we're gonna do is we will scroll down here. Um, where's my entry form? All right, so what we'll do is right here below completion date, we'll just add a simple um, HTML file input. So below our completion date right here, format that, and then we need to add our on change function. So let's go down here. First thing we need to do is you remember we, we're gonna to need to return it. So let's just do return on change. And then we'll add an our, our on change function down here in the code. And like this says, if user has, has selected a file, then we're gonna associate or save the file object to the form data. And so uh, remember we have this form data object, which is a reference. And so to actually get the value, we need to say value. And here we're just gonna save the whole file object that was selected from the on change. So just to kind of walk through what will happen, as you can see now, it's been added to the UI. When I select the file, we will get the on change event, which will get triggered here. Then we'll call with the file object will be passed. Well, the event will be passed along in the on change. So if we come to our on change method down here, we get the event, and so we say if an event target get the first file in the list, and we're going to take that file and we're going to assign it to our form data. So what that will mean is that when I actually save the data, and I do want to, um, when save data is called, that the form data value that gets passed back um, to our home component will now include this new file entry. Okay, so that's the change we're going to make here. Let's see if uh, the back end is done yet. Deployment successful, click for next steps. So now that deployment has been successful, I'm gonna to have to pull my changes back down locally. So let's copy this command. Let's go back to my project. Let's paste this command and let's pull the changes down locally. You have to make sure you remember to pull the changes locally. Otherwise your local schema, your local schema won't match what's up above and you'll run into some errors. So now it's uh, pulling the changes down and now it's generated the new models it looks like we should be good to go. That new file string should be added, should now be added to my local schema so I can work with it appropriately. All right, so let's put this back in the back. Have this here. We are passing this on on the on chain. Let's look to home to make sure there's nothing that we need to do special there. On create data, this is where I'm actually saving it. So as you can see, it is just gonna take everything that comes across and push it through, which isn't what we want. Remember, we just want um, a specific key that we want to associate with it. And the way that we want to do that is that we get the key from actually saving the image to uh, storage. So let's go back. And what we want to do is, like I said, we could get away with just doing a storage put. So what we want to do is if data that gets passed in has a file object associated with it, then we know we need to actually save the file, right? So this is gonna be the name of the file and this is what you're saving, right? And so our file is this. 
data file dot name and then the actual file that we want to save this is the file object right here and let's just make sure that there's no strange characters in here so we can do this in code i believe so you do it in code uri component so make sure we clean up any bizarre characters that are in here and then we need the response from this so we'll just call this well, let's do it this way All right and then if we actually got a value then we'll just say let i'll say respond equal that say this is let and then just assign my bad i'm so used to using constant values but there's no need and there's no need to make this reactive or anything special like that so it's now assigned a value. And then what we're gonna do down here is that on my save, remember that new key we added was called file. So we'll say file. And then if we got something back, then in file, file, save, I can't even spell it. File, save, response, dot, key. We'll hold the key that we need to store with our data. And this is complaining because of some TypeScript because it just says an object so we're gonna for now let's see set that as any let's format and we get what i believe we get what we want we'll have to test this to make sure so just a walkthrough again if i'm getting past the file object in then get the file that's associated get the file that's associated with data we're going to put that file where you you're right we're encoding it to make sure we can deal with any bizarre characters and then that's the key that's going to be associated with it. And then this is the actual file that we're saving, and this will save the file. And so now we have the file saved and we have the key. So then now let's save our objects to the data store. So let's do a quick test to see if we're actually saving our image. Let's save this here. Let's um, go back to our app and let's see if we can save a new file. So new, new for video. So I have tested this a few times. So there's a couple of images lying around for video, new video description. Um, let's choose our file and um, let's save and see what we get. So it saved our entry because you can see it's down here on the bottom. But let's now go to our console and see if we got it, our entry added. So first let's go here and look at manage our content. and new for video. And here's the key that got saved. You can see it got encoded. So let's close this and now let's go look at our storage. Here's our bucket. Let's take a look. Go inside a public. And here's our new image that was added. And so we now have our image saved. Now the next thing that we want to do is now we need to pull the image back. Let's go back to our code. Um, actually, let's take a quick look at the doc so I can explain to you the approach that I'm taking. There might be another approach, but this is the approach that I'm taking. So to download the files, because what I want to do is I want to render the image inside of my list view. So I want the image to appear right up here at the top. So to do that, we're gonna take the key that we get. So the download option sends you the object data for download or pro programmatic implementation. So this is what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna use the storage get. We're gonna pass the key that we get. We're gonna say download true. And then this the download will give us back a blob. And then we're gonna use this ability right here to create a URL from the blob. And then we'll render the URL as an image object. So that's the approach that we're gonna take. Now, um, what I decided to do here in this example is to create a component to manage all that. So what we will do, we're, let's go back, we're at home. In our home here, we render a list of these objects. And so what we're gonna do is right up here at the top of this card, we're gonna add our new image. I put a placeholder, kind of an empty, an empty shell here for my new component, it's called image render. And so what we'll do is we're just gonna just drop it in here at the top. And then we'll go back and we'll fill out all the code to support the image render. 
So first let's make sure we import my image render component. So let's go down here to import. Right here, we're gonna import my image render. It's complaining because it's not added. So let's add it down here as a component. Image render. Mm -mm. And then now let's actually use it. So here in our view, where's my view? Back to my view up here at the top. What we wanna do is add our image render component. So we'll add that right up here at the top. And as you can see, it's gonna, the image render component, it gets past the key, which is the file entry, and that's all it needs. And then it will handle the downloading it from the S3 bucket, converting it to a URL, and then rendering the URL. So let's go over to our image render component. And the first thing we need to do is we need to add the property for the key which it needs. So let's add that. And then the next thing is we need to, we're gonna need to get access to our props. So let's add props, any. And then we also need to know that we're going to need to return. Well, let's, let's get that later. So if you remember what I said here, we're, we're gonna do this download and then we're gonna convert the blob that we get back to um, a URL. So. Um, first, let's create a ref to hold the assigned URL. Well, let's add ref here. So um, we added ref up here at the top. Now it's complaining about signed URL. So we need to return the signed URL. We need to return the signed URL because the signed URL is where we use up here in the top of the div to actually render it. We're gonna just remove this whole div and um, this is what we're gonna do. And so basically what this is saying is if I'm past an image key, then I knew I need to render something. Okay, all right. And remember the image key is a property that's getting passed in. So um, we definitely need to import our um, API. So let's import that here. So we have our storage API imported and then the actual code that we need to kind of make this all work. So what we're gonna do is inside the setup for this component, what we're gonna say is that if I actually have an image key, then we are gonna call the storage to get that um, element from the bucket using the key. We're gonna say downloads true, and then we're gonna take the result. We're gonna get the body from the result, and we're gonna convert it to a URL, and we're gonna sign the signed URL sign URL gets passed uh, back up to the template and then hopefully it should actually render the image. So let's see if this all worked the first time with the code. And um, let's go back over here. So actually you can see because it's, uh, it's recompiling on the fly, it is actually working. So um, we have this component added. We are able to see our images and now let's just, now that we have it all together, let's start and just kind of do it all from scratch. So let's create a new one. Final image upload. This worked well. And then let's choose another file. Let's get one that we know does not exist already. So open. So that image is selected. This worked well. Strap the image. And let's save and it saved our image here. So there's a bunch of other stuff we can do. Maybe we'll cover in the next video. Maybe we'll go dig a little bit deeper into um, authentication access to the images. Um, right now, I don't really show how to update the image if you wanna change the image. Um, we don't manage on delete, because right now if I delete, I'm deleting the task, but it's not kind of cascading down and deleting the image. But like I said, I wanted to just get the basics done in this video. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, if you want to see more of the other things I mentioned, please leave a comment below. Um, thank you for checking this out and I'll see you next time. I'll include links in the comment section and I will upload the source code and there'll be a link to the source code included too. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoy it and we'll see you next time. Bye.